The United States has set a target to produce net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 in an effort to minimize the impacts of climate change as much as possible. Now, reaching that goal will require rapid adoption of renewable energy, electrification of machines and vehicles, and improving efficiency wherever possible. But even with such efforts, we will still need to remove hundreds of millions or even a billion tons of CO2 from the atmosphere every year by the middle of this century. So how are we going to do it? That's the question that a national team of scientists, led by researchers at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and sponsored by the Department of Energy, set out to answer in their recent report, Roads to Removal. I am James Lawler, Climate Now, and together with the Livermore Lab Foundation, we sat down with the report's lead authors to understand what they've discovered. Dr. Jennifer Petridge is a senior staff scientist at Lawrence Livermore National Lab, and she led the multidisciplinary team that created the Roads to Removal Report. The Roads to Removal Report is a national scale assessment of carbon dioxide removal. It's conducted at a county level, and we're assessing both the capacity and the costs for removing CO2 from the atmosphere in various different ways. So to conduct this analysis, we brought together experts from all across this country. And together, these individuals helped us really analyze existing data and model what we think is likely to happen over the coming 30 years. Our team at Lawrence Livermore made an analysis for the state of California a couple of years ago that showed that absolutely we could achieve the goals that our state had set. But then we started to ask, can we do that as a nation? And where are the specific opportunities to achieve CDR or carbon dioxide removal targets using different technologies? Because every place has a different opportunity and different costs. The report examines four key methods of carbon dioxide removal. Increasing forests and improving forest management practices, improving soil management on croplands, capturing CO2 in biomass and converting that biomass to form new products and prevent CO2 release, and capturing CO2 directly from air using direct air capture machines paired with renewable energy. The report also examines how much CO2 captured from biomass or directly from the air could be safely transported and stored deep underground, permanently preventing it from re-entering the atmosphere. In 2021, the U.S. Department of Energy launched the Carbon Negative Shot, a challenge to identify and scale technologies that can collectively remove at least a billion tons of CO2 annually for an average price of less than $100 per ton of CO2 removed. What Dr. Petridge and her team found is that there are multiple ways to meet that challenge. The big takeaway from this report is we can achieve upwards of a billion tons of CO2 removals from the atmosphere in this country. And we can do that affordably. But it is not a one-size-fits-all solution. Every region has a different story to tell. And so it will take policy and changes that are happening locally and engagement between the public and private sectors to achieve that gigaton or more. So one other really important aspect of this project and our takeaway message is there are things we can do today. There are things we can do right away in terms of removing using what we call ecological solutions. And these are our forests and the way that we manage our agricultural soils. We can be achieving something near 100 million tons of CO2 removals by the year 2050. There are others like converting biomass to products and capturing CO2 using a direct air capture. That's gonna take real investment and capital expenditures that will take decades to implement. So there's a, both a near-term opportunity and a long-term opportunity. Of course, decarbonizing our energy supply, as well as decarbonizing our transportation, agriculture, and industrial sectors is the top priority in the United States. It is critically important for our national net zero emissions goals and our global climate commitments. But even when we have done our best to decarbonize everything, there will still be some emissions. There will still be legacy emissions. There will still be sectors that cannot be decarbonized. That's what these roads to carbon dioxide removal can address. Even if we did every bit of decarbonizing that we could, there is still a need to remove something on the order of a billion tons of CO2 from the atmosphere. 
And that's where this report is so important. So essentially, this boils down to do our best and remove the rest. Roads to Removal is an opportunity to take the next steps to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. Every region in the nation has an opportunity. Every region has a story. To learn more about the potential for each carbon removal approach or to download the report, visit roadstoremoval.org.